Hello everyone and welcome to our featured webcast inside the Champions of Change report. The Champions of Change program is brought to you by the CE Pro and Commercial Integrator Summits being held August 17th through the 19th in Washington, D.C. I just wanted to supply a short bit of background here. The summits, which are the VIP invitation-only business development events for custom and commercial integrators, have long been recognized for their ability to create environments for real work to be done. It's where the who's who of the industry assemble and where trends are born. Only executive decision makers from the nation's top integration firms are invited to the event and consequently this creates a more exclusive environment for peers to exchange ideas, for concentrated, meaningful, and inspirational sessions, and for productive one-on-one -on -one meeting with vendors. The events are only as meaningful as the attendees make them, however, by putting new practices in place and implementing new products and business procedures. And in this past year, we've taken a particular focus in, if, in finding out exactly what the results of our events are. We were humbled and excited about what we found. In just a minute, I'll turn the table over to our editorial staff, who will talk about their conversations and interviews with executives from Harrison Home Systems, All Pro Sound, IMS Technology Services, Logic Integration, One Vision Resources, and even the companies profiled in our first report, which are now six or so months out from the launch of their change initiatives. We call these fearless, forward-looking entrepreneurs champions of change. They are implementing new billing and revenue strategies, new processes for change orders, hiring techniques, employee benefit programs, and in a moment, we will dive in on exactly how and why they've made these changes. As a quick reminder to everyone on the cast who hasn't yet applied for invitation to our executive level events, the deadline for all applications is Friday, yes, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. Remember, if you are accepted for invitation this year, the summits will host you, covering your airfare, hotel accommodations, and food and beverage. We truly believe when the best minds gather, the industries move forward. And that's the impetus for the events. Good luck to you all applying. For housekeeping notes, this webcast is being recorded and will be available for replay at www.ceprosummit.com and also at cisummit.com as well. Questions had during the webcast can be typed in in the window on the right side of your screen. I'm your moderator, Jillian Bateman Moore, and without further ado, I'm happy to introduce you to our editors. Andrea Medeiros is Editor-in-Chief for AE Ventures. She produces quality multimedia content for our e-publications. She has a broadcast journalism degree from Emerson College and seven years of multimedia experience. You may recognize her voice as being a regular attendee on AV Week. Casey Meserve is an AE Ventures writer creating investigative and timely articles for our e-magazines and special reports. She has a master's degree in English from Bridgewater State University, and she comes to us previously from Gatehouse Media. Steve Withrow is also editor-in-chief for AE Ventures. He's a writer and award-winning author with 15 years of experience in science, medicine, technology, and the arts. Andrea, I'll let you start us off with how Harrison Home Systems is boosting benefits for their employees. All right, well, let's start off with some good news. We know that home sales are on the rebound. We're all happy about that. But what that means is with business booming again, it creates a sigh of relief, but it's also creating quite a challenge for integrators. Sure. Um, because there's so much more business, you need more employees, and a lot more companies are competing to get those employees. So Harrison Home Systems' approach to that is they're putting forth better employee benefits to try to keep the employees that they currently have. Let me give you a little bit of history on the company first. It's a 12-year-old AV company. It's owned by a husband and wife team. Uh, the wife focuses on the marketing, finances, and human resources, and the husband focuses on sales and manages the home automation projects. Some of those include security systems, lighting control, motorized shades, and AV installations. 
Um, the company's already heavily focused on remote management systems. They um, use the Snap AV product line. Um, so as I said, they've already gotten into that process. Um, they include service for the first year, but after that they offer one and two year service plans. So they've been doing that for a little while. Now, as we know, this is a niche market. So they were really concerned as the smart home becomes more popular that they were going to keep and also get more employees that would be positive for their company and basically know what they're doing. Um, so they went to the CE Pro Summit and they got some tips there. Some of those tips were that they learned that employees respond better when you reward them on a more regular basis, not just a holiday bonus. It doesn't give them as much to work for. Um, they've also started a long-term disability, accident and critical illness insurance, and like I said, quarterly bonuses. Um, another thing they've done, which I find really interesting because we always talk about whether it's builders or integrators, your employees should know what they're selling or know what they're fixing or know what they're installing. That's mm -hmm. really important for them to be able to do their jobs properly. So Harrison Home Systems has started a program where their employees can purchase company products at a lower cost for their personal use. So install it in their own homes. And how they pay for that is in installments using a regular deduction from their paychecks. So I love that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a really positive thing that integrators and builders alike could start at their companies. Um, so that's been great. And they've had nearly 100% participation in these no programs, which, as you know, change is, is hard to start. So that's pretty impressive that they've been able to do that. It makes a lot of sense. Um, technicians historically have been great with fixing the tech and coming in and being able to solve those problems but with communicating and kind of teaching and customer care that's been lacking in, in, in most places and so I think to be able to communicate to a loved one how to use things you have more patience up front for sure not only that if you're dealing with it on a daily basis you're going to see more problems in your own home sure. or your family's homes that you may have already seen before you have to go into a client's home and deal with that same problem. So um, a couple other things they're doing uh, moving forward, they're not stopping there. They want to not only have employees who are intelligent in the field, they also want to build a team atmosphere. So they've started team building and also some, some training events. So they're starting a company-wide volunteer effort with the Home Builders Foundation and also a summer social event and weekly beer Fridays. So, fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. And it kind of gets the team to get to know each other and figure out how to work together. But what's also great is the technical training programs that they're doing. Um, ones on remote VPN troubleshooting, on new time tracking software, and also manufacturer training with Savant and Lutron. So those are a couple of the other things they're doing. And not only that, we talk about in situations like this, how it's so important to have a change agent who's within the company. Mm -hmm. So they've also promoted an assistant general manager to kind of lead all of this change. So really exciting things going on at Harrison Home Systems, and I can't wait to follow them in the coming months. Nice. Steve, I'll let you take it away with All Pro Sound, who was our winner this year. Great, yes, yeah, so congratulations to All Pro Sound. They're a national lighting and AV integrator based in Pensacola, Florida. And uh, some of the reasons that we chose them as the winner is that they took uh, their look at their close look at their business model and really turned it inside out and realized that they had no focus on recurring revenue or service contracts. Uh, they had been operating for 35 years and doing a wonderful job primarily in the houses of worship area um, and they had never really had anything formalized that gave them opportunities to continually interact with their customers or do any training um, of their customers beyond the initial installation. So All Pro Sound attended both CE Pro and CI summits and at the CE Pro summit they uh, attended a session that really kind of changed the the worldview of the uh, CEO Alan Lamberti and what he decided coming out of that session was that the time has come to create an RMR recurring monthly revenue model 
it was long overdue for the company. One of the reasons that it was so important for this company to create this model is that in the houses of worship area, uh, it's very complicated systems. Some of the larger churches across the country have arena level uh, technology. And what's different about that sector is that the people who are charged to actually run the technology often are volunteers who only get involved on the weekends, or they may be full-time staff members, but they may, may be moving from place to place you know, on an every other year basis. So you don't have someone uh, with a real history long-term with the technology who can be that go-to person to solve every technical challenge. So what AllPro decided to do was create what they call the Renew Service Program. And the Renew Service Program has three steps. They are discover, correct, and teach. Simply, um, AllPro wants to discover issues, correct any deficiencies, and teach customers best practices for operating and uh, you know, best use of the systems in place. What happens um, in implementing the Renew program is that AllPro has an opportunity not only to teach the uses of these systems, but also to, to really bond with the people that, that they're working with so that they can become advocates for that technology in other places that they go, and that they can also see ways to optimize the systems that are existing rather than always having to replace systems um, outright. The budgets in a lot of these um, churches and, and other places are very limited, so it makes the most sense to sort of get the most out of the systems you have but in order to do that, you really need a partner on the integrator, integrator side who's going to be there for you at you know, a moment's notice. You know, Sunday service comes along and all of a sudden, no, no, the lights don't work. What do you do? And AllPro has a great network. Um, it can do many things remotely, but it also has um, you know, plans in place for on-site work as well. And their Renew program is uh, a flat fee model or a pay-as-you-go monthly model. One other thing about uh, All Pro Sound that I found very interesting was that they took advantage of the trusted advisor directory that we offer through the event. And it allowed them to meet uh, Almo Professional AV a company that uh, has been able to advise them uh, just you know, by picking up the phone and asking questions uh, you know, in, a, in a way that um, you know, they don't have to go to an event to, to get that kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction. And th I think that was a real a good you know, takeaway from, uh, from the event and from this Trusted Advisor program that there are people out there who have been where you've been, they have faced the problems you're facing, and you know, people are willing to share uh, this information. So the change that goes on isn't a one-time thing. It, it can be you know, a continual process of, um, of conversations that you have with people in the industry. They're such an exciting company to watch and see because they're so strong. Um, on both the commercial side, you know, you see some of these gorgeous pictures here in houses of worship, but also on the residential side. So we've seen representatives from um, this company come to both the commercial and um, CE Pro summits. Um, Casey, I'll let you take it away with IMS Technology Services. Well, sure. Um, so IMS Technology Services is focusing on accountability. Hiring and keeping the right employees is really valuable, but IMS was focused on making those employees accountable for both the uh, project that they're working on as well as the customer service. And so that was the focus of their change as a result of the CI Summit. Um, IMS Technology is a 10-year-old company in Garnet Valley, Pennsylvania, and 
they're implementing their biggest change is implementing a gross profit assessment so this assessment evaluates each project based on a set of indicators rather than the project's value this will ensure that each project no matter what the cost of it has the same level of service and that eventually will lead to uh, good customer relations uh, IMS Operating Manager Mike Shin came up with the idea during a roundtable at the CI Summit from talking with Advanced Technology, um, what is it called? Advanced Technology Electro Electronic Systems Integration, which serves New England. He said he's taking a page out of their apprentice program by tying new, har new hires to the hip of lead performers in that particular line of duty for a period of time to help them learn the ropes about what it means to work at IMS and in the, in, in the industry. And he said he's gotten a lot of success uh, doing that when they're involving uh, not, a, not management, but instead someone in the, within the company who's a project manager who's demonstrated success and, and has expertise in, in that area. As for the gross assessment, uh, gross profit assessment, the, pro the company has created a set of rubrics for project managers uh, in a similar way to measure uh, that measures how sales staff are measured on revenue and gross profit targets. The new process ensures that customers receive the same level of service uh, and it, they've assigned essential milestones for each project based uh, uh, They've given essential milestones percentages of importance. And so when if those steps are mismanaged or skipped, those points are moved. It's kind of like taking a test in school. If you work the process only 70%, you get then your compensation is actually infected to correlate their with that performance. So they've actually taken the, uh, their project manager's compensation and tied it with how well they're sticking to the process of the of each project and that seems really radical to me so what you said earlier about you know pairing some of the the newer people with the stronger um, staff that all makes really sense really good sense to me and that you know comes up as kind of an obvious one but maybe not one that everyone does but this um, kind of point system does seems like something that's very radical to treat you know a project manager and to um, compensate them much like you would a sales Person. So for performance rather than now salary. Exactly. exactly. And they, they said, said that, that they had, had a little bit, a little bit of flashback from some, some of their employees so that they, so that they, so they, they, they were scheduling, scheduling team meetings, 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 meetings to bring training, training, training and to get me back. back. Uh, they said they said they said they were really struggling, struggling with the change to change may may get more help from management. management. But they said they said if they can't meet the new demands, then they might they might do a different role. Or maybe or ask maybe leave. So, so, so they're really, really focusing on and driving on the fact that they 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 need each project to be done in a certain way uh -huh. to ensure the success of the company. Uh, so far, the results have been a 20% increase in process compliance, and Shin actually says that team members are happier as as more members of the team become more consistent. Uh, the process compliance will eventually lead to happier customers and bigger sales. Awesome. Um, Steve, I think you were going to talk through logic integration and our friend Sean Hansen. Sure. Now, logic integration face, faced a definite challenge. They've been a quite successful company uh, since 2004, but in that time, they really had no process in place for change orders and it was causing them to lose quite a bit of money over time so much so to the point where they really even weren't aware that they were losing all this money uh, that they could have been earning and uh, what what happened was is uh, by attending CE Pro uh, Sean it was sort of a lightning strike for him he realized that uh, wait a minute, I have to do something to sort of stem the tide here and make sure that we're capturing all the potential earning and profit that we can from every job that we do. Uh, what was happening to them was that they were simply giving away 
tech giving away service without charging the customer, the client, for uh, any extras involved. They weren't communicating up front with the uh, customer that there are uh, certain things that um, will need a change order and will need to be charged for. And so he even joked, Sean said that, you know, the best time to get a TV, and a widescreen TV installed in your house was by our company a few years ago because you probably would have gotten it from us for free. Um, and, and you can wonder, you know, how could this company uh, be so successful um, without being aware of that? Uh, you know, they were even named um, Contractor of the Year by Cedia. And I think what it came down to was that this is a company that grew incredibly fast in a 10-year period. They went from an eight-person company working a lot of local uh, work to becoming a 30-person company with a huge swath of responsibilities. And with that growth came increasing complexity and also the difficulty of overseeing and managing everything that went on uh, or is going on in each project. So there was no real formalized process in place for change orders and there was nothing really to give the individual employee of the company a, a management role over uh, the projects that they were involved in. So since 2014 Logic Integration has built uh, two processes and the first is a formal change order process which allows them to go into every job knowing what um, you know is is normal for the job what is over and above and what needs to be charged for at, at every stage and this amazingly uh, changed from losing two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in change orders last year 2014 to earning over $100,000 in change orders in the first quarter of this year, 2015. So doing this really is a matter of changing your procedural flow, your company's processes, what's in your manuals, you know, what's in your sales um, materials. It really was a you know end-to-end -end kind of solution that they need to implement. And Above and beyond that, they had to put in place a, an online metrics dashboard, a tool that every one of their employees could use to track the finances of the business, past and present projects, budgets, hours invested, and much, much more. So staff members can each log in and they can uh, learn the things that they need to know and, and uh, they can also be much more involved in the decision-making process and the quality control process. I'm happy to say that uh, Logic Integration had their best Q1 in the history of the company uh, just these past few months and uh, Sean says they survived for 11 years without all this stuff so now imagine what we can do with it. Steve, what's so interesting about Sean is at the CE Pro Summit, he learned and, and grew and his company got better, but he was actually the inspiration for Harrison Home Systems. So here are both of these companies at this event, they're competitors and they're learning from each other. So it's just, it's a really nice thing to see. Right. It's, a, uh, you know, sometimes where you're falling down in one area, you may be exceeding, uh, succeeding in another and, uh, you know, it's that cooperation that you see in an event like this that really can you know take everybody forward. Uh, the last thing I'll say about uh, logic integration before we we move on is that um, they now have a uh, customer relation uh, relationship management system as well that allows their staff to see how many people are on the website, where they're from, what they're looking at, and it allows them to follow up with potential customers. So it's just another way of uh, extending their marketing efforts. But it's not just the marketing people who do this. It could be any member of the staff. I think that's great. And Logic is another really fun one to watch. You know, they're strong in residential. They also have a commercial side to their business. Um, I think it was last year, I want to say, we did a story on them uh, for their doomsday bunker. 
that they had done and it was just amazing they got a lot of coverage for it a lot of broadcast coverage for it um, on the doomsday planner show um, and when we were at Cedia in Denver I was in my hotel room and we got the newspaper under the door and there was Sean on the cover of the the newspaper so I thought that was really funny uh, but they've grown so quickly very impressive company as well yeah, two million dollars uh, in Q1 as opposed to uh, six hundred thousand dollars last year at the same time Pretty amazing. So I guess we'll talk about One Vision next, Casey. Sure. Well, One Vision's um, big problem was trying to find the right people, and we've been talking about this a lot today. Uh, that finding the right, hiring the right people is, has been really tough in this industry because it's grown so fast. Yeah. And One Vision is located in Boston, and you'd think that in a high-tech, well-educated city like that, you could find employees. Finding employees would be easy, but it wasn't. One example was One Vision is trying to find a traditionally trained computer programmer who can write home automation programs, and they're having trouble trying to find one of those. So managing director Joey Kolchinski said that he actually came to the CE Summit with several assumptions. He said, we assumed that talent would be plentiful and easy to find because it's an established industry. We assume that they'd be qualified and that they'd be able to do the job. We assume that they'd be able to come on board and assimilate pretty quickly. And it turns out that none of those assumptions were right. Mm. <laughs> so he said after meeting with his peers during one of the sessions that he realized he needed to leave those assumptions in the dust. Uh, so one of the things that One Vision did was changing the way it recruits and hires people. He said that um, first they decided to increase the recruiting efforts. They invested in a LinkedIn recruiter, uh, they, uh, which is a software program. Sure, LinkedIn's been so popular in this industry as well. Andrea, I know you started your LinkedIn profile and really networked with some of the AV folks in the industry and exactly. really that's been a successful channel for this particular audience. And it's yeah, sometimes better than email to get in contact with people in the industry. You're absolutely right and trying to find people who are uh, who are good fits for a position has been really imp is a really good way to find them that way. They're also maintaining a dedicated employee who's exclusively focused on recruiting. This isn't a huge company. I think there's about 30 people. Mm -hmm. And yet hiring someone, hiring a recruiter in-house in who's focused on that is a big deal. Second, in order to attract talent, they've investigate, invested in their image and they've rebranded themselves as a different kind of custom integrator. So their focus is on the customer experience and not on the hardware. They'll use whatever brand they think is best for the customer. Kolchinski says that rebranding the company has helped generate a lot of interest from potential employees who wouldn't normally look for employment in the custom integration field. Uh, thirdly, the, co the company restructured its interview process so that it, they're not only uh, helping decide whether a candidate is a technical fit, but it also evaluates how the, how the uh, potential uh, candidate would fit with the company's values. Now they've ran into a problem here because they realized they didn't have any set in stone values. And so they actually had to create values in order to measure potential uh, hirees against these values. Uh, so one of the things they did was building a set of values and it was an organic process, but they actually met with the entire team. This I love wasn't that. It, yeah, it wasn't was one person who was a change agent. It was the entire team having input into how how the company would proceed, not just in hiring people, but as an entire company in this marketplace. Uh, so the values were created over several months, and they actually went on a retreat to Florida, uh, to and there they actually voted to modify and clarify one of their values. So the list came together. Uh, I can actually share the list because it's pretty interesting. Uh, they share a passion for perfection. They come prepared with plan B, C, and D. They emphasize, emphasize, wow, I misspelled that. 
emphasize with their clients and every detail matters. They respect and fiercely protect their clients' privacy. They, they are thought leaders and provide innovative solutions. They support each other and the communities in which they live. They are transparent and not afraid to address the elephant in the room. They own the experience and they learn from their mistakes and share lessons learned. And so every month, every member of the team comes in and they talk about how the core values have affected business and affected projects and things like that. So now that they have a set of values in place, they can actually continue with the interview process. And that is also something that various team members take part in. It's actually a three-step process, and they'll just bring in uh, uh, employees from from various angles to take part in that to take part in that uh, process. And one person one person will interview on their technical skills, and one person will interview on their values and how those st stack up against the company. So the change has really empowered the One Vision team and it's helped to uh, helped employees to internalize these core values. And it's also helped to onboard new hires in a much more efficient manner. I definitely buy that. I think it's very helpful to kind of boil the values down mm -hmm. so that it's digestible for the entire team and company. So you have um, a company mission that everyone's aware of. Absolutely, and everybody buys into. Um, and also, um, not for nothing, but to market the company to new hires, you know, talking about how they support the communities they live in, that's huge with millennials, to have that kind of value to your company and heartbeat, really, to your company. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say One Vision does a fabulous job of marketing. You know, their website is spot on. Um, definitely responsive and mobile. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of integrators that are struggling on the marketing side of it, and I think One Vision really does a great job of it. Yeah, their their website is really a, a it becomes a, a resource. It's very interactive. It's not just a, you know something pretty to look at. It really helps you to figure out what this company is about. And you know when um, new hires are looking to. Um, research more about the company the web is the first place they're going mm -hmm. so if it looks like you know if your website gives the vision that your company is kind of older and not as progressive and doesn't have those values and you're communicating something right up front before the talent even you know wants to come through the door to interview or makes that decision to submit the resume mm -hmm. and I think another thread that came out of many of these was the idea of a change agent mm -hmm. being more of a team effort than just an individual. You know, you can hire somebody to be a catalyst for change. You can bring in a consultant or whichever to kind of shake up your, your systems. But once that consultant leaves, ordinarily the change just <laughs> grinds to a halt or actually even kind of warps and doesn't follow, you know, the initial purposes. We talked to an expert um, on change agents in our last edition of Champions of Change who said it always works best when you have a change agent who's already been within the company, whether you're promoting within or you hire someone that's going to be there, be a part of the team and help implement that change. And then, you know, you look at turnover too, you know, if you have, uh, this industry has a lot of turnover in some areas and, uh, you know, if your change agent's not there, you know, six months down the line, you know, then you have to, how do you re-educate your change? You know, it's, it's very, it's not an easy process. So the more that you can kind of share the wealth and share the responsibilities of change and, um, and you'll, the more that you'll benefit from the change. It's not really about pride and ownership in the, in the change that, it, that is, uh, that is happening. You have to get get your employees invested in it, not just because they have to, but because they want to and they're excited about it. Uh, speaking of excited, we're really excited to talk about um, the progress from our last edition of Champions of Change. As Jillian said, we're following these people months later. And as you know, implementing change isn't easy in general, but sticking to your plan can be even more difficult. So we just wanna to continue to honor these people because they've stuck to their plans and they've been really successful. Um, NetAB was actually the winner of our last edition of Champions of Change. They actually, we've spoken a lot about websites and how important they are, they just 
launched a new website about a month or two ago talking about their new RMR, recurring monthly revenue packages. Um, they've decided on ConnectWise um, as a backbone, but they're also looking at IHG and PackEdge. Um, they said they're not committing to more than one platform uh, because not every project has the same needs. So they're keeping some versatility there. Um, in the meantime, they're also launching training programs. Um, team members are taking certified technology specialist training and certified um, technology specialist design prep classes. So they're also having employees get involved that way. Um, and they're not stopping there. They have a goal set for themselves for this year. They want 15% of more RMR by the end of 2015. So pretty noble cause there. <laughs> and I'm really excited for them and they've done a really great job. Um, the second company I want to talk about is Domo Prestige. Um, they were at the CE Pro Summit. We featured them last time as well. Um, they're an AV retail store and install installer in Quebec. Um, they're using Panamax's Blue Bolt technology and also Control 4. What's interesting about them is um, they were willing to break down their new RMR packages for us. They offer three different packages right now that they're trying out. One's $50 a month, one's $100 a month, and one's $150 a month, kind of seeing what's more successful, what they should do, and of course, each one has different service management programs. So what they're gonna be doing in the next year, um, because the most popular is the first option, which is of course $50 a month, they're gonna consider changing the other two options because maybe they're too expensive, they can take a couple services out that maybe doesn't appeal to their clients because that option one, you can market as only $1,000 a year. So mm -hmm. that's really sure. not that hard for customers to digest. So that's some of the things that they're working on right now. You know, I give a lot of credit to these companies for being so open about their processes that they're not looking at their processes as sort of protected secret mm -hmm. uh, information that they don't want to give away to their competitors to lose their uh, advantage in the market. Uh, what they're seeing, I think, a lot of the times is that by sharing, they're making the whole industry, the whole market better. And that can really only benefit them in the long run. Because ultimately you want all of these service plans in general to succeed. Mm -hmm. So if everyone's on board with that, it's helpful for the industry in general. Um, I wanna switch a little bit over to Human Circuit. Um, they're not focusing on RMR right now. They're actually focusing on outreach, um, which is something a little bit different than we've talked about today. Um, they're based in the Washington DC area and they're trying to build relationships with their customers by using blogs, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and other facets of multimedia. Um, they've already launched a blog um, and right now they're working on getting video profiles of their employees. Now there's been some apprehension there. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone who's in the this world wants to go on camera, believe it or not. <laughs> Why would they not want to be on camera? I have area? no idea. Install <laughs> the cameras, but don't be. <laughs> <laughs> they want to be behind the camera, not in front of it. Um, but anyway, um, Bruce Kaufman's actually launched a, a blog using WordPress, and that goes on their website. So it's kind of like you're more connected to the customer. That's the idea they're going after. So customers would rather choose you over someone they don't feel like they know. Um, but it's been a little bit of a hurdle trying to get people to go on video, but they're, they're working toward that right now. They're actually using Vimeo instead of YouTube um, because they think that's a little bit more of a professional site. They're also, um, they purchased a GoPro camera and they're thinking about making time-lapse videos showcasing some of the projects that they're doing. So that's what they're working on moving forward in the future. Um, and they're reworking employee profiles on LinkedIn. Again, trying to get the customers to feel like they know the people who are coming into their homes and anyone would feel more comfortable with that. Sure, I think LinkedIn's great. Vimeo as well. Uh, YouTube has some great SEO tied to it, a little bit higher than Vimeo, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're seeing that everywhere now where you kind of have to communicate with your potential clients and develop that rapport before they're willing to really dive deeper to find out what you're about. It's another form of marketing that is so easy to do and I mean, every company should be doing it at this point. There were a lot of entries and I wish we could have showcased more in some of our reports. You know, 
um, different companies that are garnering RMR from installing shades, um, those who are standardizing their product bases throughout their um, companies and expanding on their client care programs. Um, there are four or five that are profiled in each of the Champions of Change reports and you can go to the links there to download um, edition one and edition two that have photos and some more in-depth dives into what each of the um, companies are doing. I'll turn it over for questions at this point um, and I'll go ahead and ask the first one. If you do have any questions, you can type it again in that chat um, window on the side of your screen. Um, and I'll throw this one out there for all the editors. You know, you've done a couple of these reports at this point. Why do you think it's so tough to get employees who are qualified in the field? Because it seems like that's one that continually comes up. I think because the housing market was down for so long, no one was getting trained for this because it was kind of a, it was a scary environment. So now we're dealing with a situation where the market's booming and there just aren't enough trained people to go after. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it's competitive to get the quality people. Sure. There's also training issues. Uh, I mean, you can't go to a university for home automation. So where do you go to get this type of training? That's one of the issues that uh, One Vision was running into. And so I think, Steve, uh, Steve you mentioned that there, were, there was one, uh, one uh, a company we covered that is actually going into the trade schools. Uh, that was actually a company that we covered, uh, Rick Clark, um, in oh. the last edition. And he was going into trade high schools trying to talk about what they do because a lot of people out there, sure. whether they're in high school, whether they're at a trade school, whether they're getting their bachelor's degree, they don't really know what this is. The regular person sitting in their high school class doesn't really know what home automation mm -hmm. does at this mm -hmm. time. So some of these companies have started marketing to them in a way that they're just explaining, look at all these really cool things you could do. So that's part of yeah, it. Yeah, and I think to a company has to look at the the hard skills first off. You know, does the person have the technical knowledge and ability to do the job, to fix the systems, to install the systems and products? But then there are the soft skills, mm -hmm. the, the communication skills, the human interaction skills that in the home automation industry, as opposed to working in a corporate environment, you know, are particularly important. Because if you're uh, going into somebody's brand new home, you know, and, and your job is to reassure mom or grandma that, uh, you know, when they hit something on their smartphone, that w w this thing that they want to happen will happen. You know, you have to be a, a bit of a psychologist <laughs> and, a, you know, a little bit of a diplomat sometimes to be able to do that. So it goes beyond just being able to make the system work to actually being a teacher and a trainer and a coach. And that's so important because the last thing you want to do as an integrator is install all of these systems, have someone who doesn't know how to explain it, and then you go back to the home a couple months later and there are sticky notes all over the place trying to tell the person <laughs> how to do it. So that customer service has become so important. And it's really tough. You know, other countries do a really great job of training for this position. Um, and there's definitely an ideal skill set that, it, that blends those um, tech skills, the hard skills, and the communication skills because, you know, um, historically when a technician goes into a home to install something, the customer tends to break their walls down a bit. So uh, where they're talking to the salesperson up front, maybe they want to buy something and then that's all they want for now. When the technician comes in and starts installing and say, says, you know, what you could really use is this. Um, those upselling skills are so, so coveted in this industry, and it's really tough to find technicians that have both. Because you're going to believe the technician over the salesperson, <laughs> so it's a perfect sure. way to upsell. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think those are all the questions we have for now. I don't see any others coming in. So with that, I will wrap up this edition of the webcast. If you have any questions about um, applying for invitation to the two events, you can contact Lee. She's our guest recruitment specialist, and her number is 508-618-8330. Again, the deadline is tomorrow at 5 p.m. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.